Engineering Yearbook Photographers. This is Alex Wilson with Wallsworth Yearbooks. I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, taking portraits from home um, and working with indoor lighting. Uh, so as I mentioned in my last video, really, if possible, take these photographs outside. Um, they're a lot more appealing. Natural light is definitely what you wanna work with, um, but sometimes that may not be an option. So in this case, I, uh, I chose certain things that I, I wanna point out specifically. So it's 10.30 in the morning right now. Um, the reason why I did that is the sun is kinda coming from uh, the top of the roof. Um, there's not any major harsh shadows that are going on at this time. I do have a pretty good sized picture window that is right behind the camera. Um, and the light really is kinda coming in at my feet. Um, so you do want to be aware that if it was a little bit lower light, let's say 9 a.m., um, just the top of the, the windowsill uh, may, may make a weird line of light on my, on my chest here. So um, again, about 10.30, I'm making sure the light is down by my feet. In this case, um, my house is a mess because we just moved. Um, so I put up this backdrop. You could hang a sheet if you didn't have a good wall to work with. The solid wall will work pretty well. But a couple things that you want to consider is don't just stand straight on. You can look like a total mugshot. I would give a little bit of depth, stand a little bit at your sides. Hands in your pockets with your shoulders back can really, really help. Um, if you want, you can cross your arms. I'm not sure if your school has a specific policy on how these photographs should be taken. Uh, but try a different couple angles. So, you know, face one side, see if the light's a little bit different than facing the other. One thing I did do was I put a small little light over here on the side. Um, be careful, fluorescent lights can be really yellow and make uh, skin tones orange. They can be fixed afterwards in post-production, but for the most part, you really wanna kinda make sure that um, obviously your skin tones are not orange. Uh, so, so work with that. Again, um, as you crop these, do not zoom in with your, your phone. Um, so, you know, as you're, you're taking this, have it pretty far apart or, or, or distance from you. Your yearbook advisors and students can crop the photos, so don't be too worried about if there's too much space. The one thing you don't want to do is crop too far in because then um, your son or daughter or, or student will have uh, the, the really big head in the photograph and we don't want that to happen. Um, so again, uh, just review uh, the window behind you. I think it's, it's better that way, uh, probably around 10 o'clock in the morning, maybe 2 o'clock, depending on which way the sun is facing. In this case, it's a, a south-facing uh, window behind you. Um, play around with different rooms, work with different backdrops, which I'll show you in a second, just so you can see the difference. And um, again, shoulders back, really trying to uh, work with your student, make sure that they are smiling, uh, make them laugh, because those are gonna be the best ones. Um, take lots of photos. Do not decrease the resolution of the camera photo. Um, make sure that you share that on the highest, uh, highest priority. And with Wallsworth, the easiest way to do it is via community upload by going to yearbookforever.com or you can download the Yearbook Snap app. Um, and that looks like, oh, sorry, went too far. Uh, the Snap app right on the top. Uh, you can download that and share that photo directly with the school um, advisor and they'll go right in the yearbook. Just make sure you mark it as uh, portrait. One thing you really want to avoid is having a backlit subject. So in this case, the window is on the side over here. Um, so there's still pretty good light coming through. Again, it's a pretty large window, so I'm pretty fortunate that I have some natural light coming in, but I do have this light behind me and your camera may or may not work well with that. Um, I'm gonna show you another example in a second, just a little bit off to the side, cropping that window out. Uh, keep in mind if you are working with your camera and you are on your phone, what you can do in this case, I'm not sure if you can see this, but if you hold at the bottom of the screen, your camera will actually focus the light and will lock that lighting area on the bottom of my shirt here. Um, and it should eliminate the distractions of that light behind me or the window behind me. It may make that window a little bit blown out, which could be a really cool effect, so play around. Um, and really with everything in photography, there's no perfect right answer for everything, unless you're doing a complete studio lighting job, um, then it's pretty, uh, pretty specific in calculations. Um, so play around and see what works best for you. And again, just the biggest piece is just making your student smile. I wanted to give you another option. Um, in this case, I'm not using the backdrop, uh, but you can see there's a heating pipes behind me. So very quickly, if you're not paying enough attention, you might have a pole coming out of your, your student's head. So just be really careful with that option. Um, again, sometimes we just can't avoid these things. 
In this case, I do have the window um, on to the side. So it's a little bit darker over here in the room. Um, my camera may not uh, show that in this video, but um, again, I prefer the light coming from directly behind the photographer or the camera. Um, but in this case, you should be good. Uh, again, just use the same cropping um, tips that I just gave you a second ago and you should be all right. Um, but do try to find something in the backdrop that is the least busy. Um, and, and again, just try not to have things cut into people's heads. So I think this, uh, this, this piece of furniture behind me is right at my head level. Um, so I might try to avoid that and adjust my camera angle or position my uh, subject a little bit differently. I talked about it a little bit before, but the lighting, um, when you do have the camera with the window behind you, you don't run into shadows. So you could see in the earlier video that as soon as I turn my face, it gets a little bit darker over here. So again, when that first video I had with the, the studio backdrop, you couldn't really see those shadows. So I think that worked out really well. Uh, most of you are taking photos with your cell phone and there's a lot of different variations of cell phones to be used. I alluded to it a little bit before. Um, if you're working with an iPhone, um, there's some, some great features. One, just as I mentioned, do not zoom in. Anytime you're taking photography, get closer to your subject. So if you're a little bit too far away, don't zoom in with your, your fingers. Don't use the little key commands on the bottom. Keep it like in the natural view of what you're working with and get closer to your student or son or daughter as you're taking that photograph. Um, if you are working with like an iPhone or your phone is a little bit newer and you have some advanced settings, some of the portrait settings are really, really cool. You can pretend like you're in a studio lighting environment. You can work with natural light. Um, so going to the portrait mode, you can switch to the different uh, variations of what the, the camera will give for you. Again, play around with the different ones depending on your lighting, your backdrop, your settings. Um, some will may look better than others. The portrait mode, what it will do is blur out the background um, so that the focus is clearly on you, the subject. Um, it's a really fancy effect and it looks great. Um, so yeah, I hope this helps and uh, have a great day.